All right, what's up guys? How's it going? What's up Stanley, Tony, Bear? Good to see y'all on here tonight. If you're here, uh, feel free to comment. Um, let me know you're here. Let me know what you wanna see. Let me know what you wanna hear. Um, I'm excited. I've been looking forward to this as well. Uh, because I'm here to show off my pedals that I make all by hand. I'm here to show off and unveil a new pedal that I've been working on for a while. Um, and I'm also um, just kind of going through my setup, you know, playing a little guitar um, through my really cool 60-something uh, Silvertone amp uh, through a 412. Fun time. It's a good time. What's up, David? What's up, Jason? It's good to see a um, appearance from uh, my buddy over at PJ and the Beard. Uh, they're really, really good friends of mine. They do some really cool stuff. Um, nice. So we're looking, seeing people excited about the new pedal. We're seeing, um, thank you for complimenting my new amp. A uh, little bit of a new acquisition I got not too long ago. Um, but let's get into it. Let's kind of look at my setup and look at what I'm running with today. So, as you can see, I'm playing my uh, little pink Strat here. Um, and a little plug for uh, Warp Core pickups. This is actually um, my own little custom set uh, in this pink Strat that I put. They made up for me, wired completely by hand, uh, and they sound phenomenal. They're pretty much like a flat pole piece um, Texas Special. They sound super good and oh man, they're just, they're great. They're super fun. They are super clean. Um, bridge pickup's not too harsh. Dial back a little bit. It's really, really nice. Thank you Warp Core for these amazing pickups. So as we can see down on the table here, um, we got the new guy here. Not really awkwardly uh, turned over on its back so you can't see what it is. Um, but we also have um, the Hungry Panda here that I'm going to run through, show you um, some of my favorite settings and just kind of go through the trim pot um, on the inside. We also have the Fuzzy Fox. And this is kind of a, kind of a new Fuzzy Fox. Um, this is the original, obviously. Um, kind of mint green, blue color. This is actually the Arctic Fox. I'll make this available here pretty soon. Um, that you can get it in white if you'd prefer it over blue. It does take a real man to play a pink guitar. To play a pink guitar. Yes, it does. Yes. So I get, I get picked on a lot for this guitar. Um, but a cool story, I actually picked it up off Reverb for 40 bucks. It's a little cheap Austin Strat. Um, when we figured out that my wife and I were going to have a little girl, I decided, you know what? I might as well get a little pink guitar. So I picked it up and I just modded it to no end. The only thing left stock on it is the neck and the body. Um, fun stuff. Uh, I love it. One of my favorite guitars, actually. So, yeah, we're going to run that through the Atlantic. All these pedals in this order. Um, and I'm running a an overdrive into a fuzz because this is the way I use these two pedals. Um, this is the way they sound the best to my ears and to my own personal setup and preference. Um, yes, Turquoise Guard, I saw a custom shop uh, Strat with the combination and I, I had to do it. I had to. Um, so yeah, back to, back to the setup. Uh, we have the Atlantic here. Um, delay and reverb. I'll throw the reverb on when, you know, when I'm feeling uh, saucy. Uh, my delay I'll probably have on all the time. And then I'm running it all into a tuner just to make sure I don't hurt anybody's ears uh, because it sounds terrible. So I'm going to tune up quick so that I don't annoy myself the whole entire live stream with this. Um, that's why I put it here. But yeah, let's dive into these pedals. Let's dive into what they can do, um, starting with the Fuzzy Fox. Um, yes, New X or Nux, I don't know exactly how to say it. They make some killer stuff. I love, I love my Atlantic. It really is, um, my go-to for delay and reverb. And honestly, these three pedals are my setup. This is, 
This is what I go for right here. The angry face tuner. I like it. So let's go through it. The Fuzzy Fox. Um, many people have probably heard this pedal before uh, on PJ and the Beard if you've watched it. There's a couple videos floating around on YouTube, uh, my own personal videos, but this is a very unique fuzz pedal because it's not in your uh, traditional two transistor um, fuzz face that the fuzz needs to be all the way up and that it really just doesn't sound good unless it's maxed. This pedal has a very torn speaker-esque type tone, a very like early distortion type of fuzz, and that's kind of what I went for. I wanted it to take my clean tone, what it came out of my speaker and out of my amp, and just give it fuzz. I didn't want it to color it like a big muff and scoop the mids. I didn't want it to get you know super, super lost in a mix. I wanted it to uh, stand out very, very well. So that's exactly what I was going for with this Fuzzy Fox. And um, believe it or not, a Fuzzy Fox used to look like this. This is actually the template of a, a Fuzzy Fox. It used to be just a one knob pedal with an LED, a switch, you know, some jacks, and that was it. Um, I made it that way because I figured more people would like it um, because it could fit on a, a pedal board easier. You weren't committing to too much space um, but it got the job done. To be honest, those fuzzy foxes weren't as versatile as um, this one that I'm going to show you today. Um, the single gain, not either, you know, a lot of gain or just than a lot of gain. It wasn't. It wasn't to the point where it was like, oh man, I can get like a torn speaker type sound I can get this or that no it was more of just like here's your fuzz pedal you can make it more fuzzy or a little less fuzzy but that's all you get and that those were actually wired all point to point I have something a little a little special to show um, and I'm actually gonna switch cameras here so this is a pretty much the first pedal I ever made it was a comp uh, a compressor pedal that I got off Amazon um, and I decided that it didn't work, okay? I, I couldn't get it to work. It, I did something wrong um, in my early days of pedal building. And I decided to do a little fuzz circuit in it, a very simple one. Um, and it's actually a volume and a bias control. Um, and I loved it. I tinkered around with different um, parts and values and everything else like that. And it turned out to be something that I really liked. Um, so let's go ahead and run through the Fuzzy Fox. Um, I'm going to put it kind of about unity gain um, on the level, and I'm going to go ahead and just do the gain all the way down. Um, and I'm going to mute my mic for a minute because it gets a little feedbacky. So here we go. That was gain all the way down. Um, it's not as heavy of a fuzz as a lot of people um, could imagine. Uh, it's really just a natural, like, push your amp to the edge kind of sound. Um, so let's go ahead and roll that fuzz up a little bit. Let's just go max and let's do the same thing.
So that's the Fuzzy Fox. Um, and yes, uh, Caleb, I do use these fuzzy foxes in church. Um, believe it or not, fuzz belongs in a worship set. Let me just tell you. Uh, and I actually, in this order, is what works best for me. Um, panda running into fox because the fox boosts the panda in a very unique way. And I'll even show that as I introduce the panda. But in the new fuzzy foxes, I'll go ahead and turn it. You can see that they have this uh, bias uh, trim right here. So what that does is can give the fuzzy fox an even more spitty, less sustained like tone. And we'll go ahead and kind of go through that a little bit. Crank that down. And let's see what we got here. doesn't necessarily roll off well as far as the um, like a fuzz face um, I know that's a question I get asked a lot um, the best way to do a clean ish roll off on a fuzzy fox is to crank the gain all the way up do the level you know above unity somewhere in there and go from there so I'll show you that right now gets spitty it still kind of stays uh, more of a rough raunchy type fuzz um, definitely that old school torn speaker type thing um, but yeah if you have any questions about the fuzzy fox as we go on feel free to ask because we are going to move on to the hungry panda so like I said earlier, I am a worship guitar player. I play at churches. I play at events like that. Um, so clean to overdriven tones is kind of usually where I like to stay um, and put my tone. Um, so I have a few examples here today. We'll go back down to the pedal board cam. We have a version one, a version one um, Hungry Panda that um, this was actually one of the prototypes uh, when I started doing the switch and the germanium stuff. And you'll notice that it has an extra pot. You'll notice this one also over here has an extra pot as well. This one is very similar. What I was doing in these differently was testing out different um, clipping styles. This one being a little bit more of a high gain um, silicon type style, while this one is a more of a germanium, a lot more compressed, low headroom type thing. With um, actually, this one is a uh, clipping diode toggle, and this one is a brightness toggle. Um, and yes, Jason, this one is very, very similar to the one you had. Um, that was yours, was when I decided to turn the um, gain knob into a internal trim pot like I have on the new ones. Um, so I primarily use my Hungry Panda as like a slightly dirty clean boost. Um, nothing too crazy, nothing too wild. Um, but I just like to push the front end of a clean or slightly dirty amp to give it just a really killer, killer tone. So let's add some reverb. Let's pull out the worship guitarist in me and let's do something with the Hungry Panda. Bye. 
You can see the Hungry Panda is a very, very, dare I say, transparent. Um, that's such a buzzword. Um, how about let's just say it's very, maybe y'all can think of a better way to describe it. Because of the transparent, uh, it's not a tube screamer. Um, none of those things, actually. Not, not close to any of those things. Um... Yes, I did do something something to this switch in the new one. Um, and that's why I said, Jason, that I need to send you this new one. Because it's far, far, far superior to um, the one that I did before. The version one, this one is far superior. The version one's good. It can get you some good tones. This one is better. It's better in so many more ways. I actually... Um, the general basis of the circuit is very similar to um, the version one, very similar to this guy or even this guy here, um, but the clipping circuit is where it got really different. So it turn, turned from a brightness toggle, basically turning a capacitor on and off in the output of the circuit into... Um, not as subtle for sure, definitely not as subtle, um, but it turned it from a brightness toggle into a clipping diode switch, a two-way clipping diode switch um, that goes from a germanium, it's actually an asymmetrical germanium uh, clipping on the hungry side, and then on the stuff side, it's more of a, as you notice, it's, wide, it's kind of a wide open, uh, big, you know, clean boost, type sound with just a little bit of crunch. That is actually a combination of like an LED and silicon diodes in there to achieve that. You can see this one's very different wired. This is actually the prototype for it um, for my own personal collection. Um, this, I will say not because I made this pedal. This pedal does not leave my pedal board ever. I don't ever take it off because this is always on. I'll stack the Fox on it. I may pull in a blues driver, I may pull in a, um, you know, whatever, I don't even know, a tube, actually a tube screamer sounds killer with this. Uh, let's see, Tony, what's the hangry mod version then? Um, so that's, you're probably referring to, um, the stomp box fuzz, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, because I put, a little bit of a mod on that, made it a little bit higher headroom, a little bit more gnarly, um, if you will. Um, yes, uh, that is a bit of a different clipping circuit, and it's pushing the transistors a lot more overall uh, in that circuit. So it's producing more of a fuzz rather than an overdrive. Yes, yeah. So yeah, that Stompbox fuzz is definitely... Push to the point where it's producing more of a fuzz and an overdrive, unlike this. This is like a super pulled down, settled um, compared to that. Uh, Jason, yes, there is more gain. There is a lot more gain. Um, so those germanium diodes, uh, they didn't produce a ton of gain. They did, but not a lot of headroom. And I know what you mean by that. Um, yeah, so I actually added a, uh, a different diode in there uh, running asymmetrical with those germanium diodes. Um, so what that means is making the waveforms less, less even across the board. Um, they're more like the, you know, the harder your play, the more dynamic it'll become. 
Uh, and that's kind of what I chose to do with that germanium side because I really wanted it to feel like as you dug in, the amp was really, really crunching more and more. Um, and then, yeah, that um, stuff side is really can be an overdrive, very light overdrive with super high headroom, or it could be a uh, clean boost. If you want to boost the front end of the amp, if you want to boost another drive pedal, um, whatever you're wanting to do with that. So let's play with that gain toggle. Let's show Jason um, what we're doing here. Let's roll it back and let's see what we got going. Don't want to spoil this surprise. I almost flipped it over. So, all right. So let's run through this uh, with the gain all the way down. Very touch sensitive. Yes, you're right, uh, Stanley. Very touch sensitive. So let's test it with the gain down. I'll roll the gain up all the way and then you'll see what that gain uh, sweep looks like. Sorry guys, I had my mic muted. So, the um, as you can tell, that stuff side is very um, boost-like. It's pretty much giving you like a. It's pretty much giving you like a clean boost, and yeah, <laughs> I just saw that I was muted. How embarrassing, guys! How embarrassing. Anyways, um, yeah. So the stuff side. I'm so un this is this live stream although it might look decent was so I was so unprepared I felt like I was so unprepared but I'm glad some people like it is all I'm saying it's all I'm saying so yes you can see on this side uh with the stuff side it was definitely more of a clean boost rather than that big airy you know uh super driven kind of sound and then on the germanium side there was just like a little bit of crunch just a wee bit um not enough to like be an overdrive i wouldn't i wouldn't consider uh more of just kind of a dirty boost kind of thing but it doesn't have a whole lot of headroom i'll kind of show you that So yeah, I mean on that on that hungry side, it definitely pushes, um, but it's just not a ton. It's not like your typical um, LPB one that's just gonna like annihilate the amp because it's so darn loud. So let's roll that gain up and let's see the other way around what we can what we can achieve. We got some stuff happening here, guys. All right, all right. So Mike is getting muted, and we are going to rock on this. Uh, let's do a little a little jam ish thing um, and see what happens.
this thing so much um it's my it is my pedal it is my sound in a box um stanley also another really good friend of mine here in the chat he was um i was excited to hear when he got these pedals because he's a very he strives for a very similar tone that i do in a sense that he doesn't just want a clon or a tube screamer or something crazy just in front of the amp. He wants just like a boost. He wants to take what he has and just make it bigger. Just make it sound killer. So that's exactly what I was shooting for with this Panda, with this version 2, um, was just a great clean boost to clean overdrive. I don't want that honky mid-tone all the time. I, there are times I want that tube screamer sound, but there are times that I definitely don't. So, it is a hot box. Yes, it is. It's, um, it's yes, Tony, I'll reply to both of yours. Um, it's a hot box. It can get you some volume. It can get you some drive. What I love is putting it, obviously it doesn't do it too much justice with a solid state amp. It definitely does. It's showing, what the reason I, chose this amp is because I wanted to show off how those diodes change the tone. Uh, what I usually use is a Hughes & Kettner Tubemeister 18, um, and I use it kind of right on the edge of breakup, and what that does is just pushes it just a bit further. Uh, it makes it sound killer. So Jason said, where do you like to set the trim pot? Um, well, it... <sighs> You're putting me in a place here, Jason, because I like it for all things. And I made it internal because I said set it and leave it. But honestly, honestly, I like rolling it all the way up, all the way, um, and using the hungry side as my overdrive uh, tones, my more high gain overdrive stuff, and use the stuff side as my clean boost, still slightly dirty. Um, but the the thing with both of those settings is you do have to um, sweep the level just a little bit. Um, you have to change it just a tad because the hungry side, because it's germanium, by nature, germanium is less headroom. Um, and then the stuffed is LEDs, what well, isn't an LED. And if you're a pedal builder, if you know anything about clipping circuits, LEDs are like minimal clipping, super high volume. Um, and that's why I chose that because that's exactly what I wanted that side to do. So I'm going to leave the gain maxed on this guy. Let's combine these. Let's play around with uh, combos before we even get to this guy. Don't even look at this pedal. Or this one way over here because it's the same thing. Just, yeah, we'll get to it. Don't even look at this because we're focused here. This is where your eyes should be. Well, here. This is where your eyes should be because no one cares about the tuner. No one cares. So let's get to it. Um, play through the Hungry Panda first. Also, listen to that, guys. Not too much, not too much clicking. Just so you know, it's not gonna pop super loud. Um, it stays pretty quiet. Keep your eyes off the lazy llama. Don't even look at it. Don't. It's That is totally a name that I should steal, honestly, because obviously I got an animal thing going on. Um, so thank you for that, Jason. I don't know if you want royalties on that name, um, but I might be able to pay you like two cents a year for that name. I'm willing to offer you two cents a year. Um, if that interests you, let me know, let me know. So let's do some stacking. Um, I'm gonna keep it, sorry about the echoing, I'm just trying to think about what I wanna do. Um, I'm gonna keep it on the clean side. Just one of the first batch. 
I've been a lazy llama, not gonna lie. I am always a lazy llama. I'm always laying around. I look forward to Saturdays. I don't want to do anything. Are you kidding? And then I got to do something. Who's, who signed me up for doing this on a Friday night? What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Jeez. All royalties go to my wife. All the royalties always go to my wife. Always. Always. Dude, John Mayer sounds? I could, but man, this video shut down, bro. That's all I can play. That's all I can play. Or that's all I can play. I can't play anything else because I'm going to get shut down. Facebook is going to track me down. Let's do it. Okay. Maybe I can think of some John Mayer-esque stuff. Um, inspired. And then I'll boost it with the Fox. Let me see what I can think of. Yes, yes, yes. Now you finally understand why I'm not just trying to sell you my pedals. I'm trying to tell everybody that this, this is the sauce for your tone. This is where it's at. And all I'm saying, Jason, with PJ and the beard, if these don't show up on your on your show soon, I'm gonna lose it. I need to send you these. I need to get these to you. Stanley does run two pandas, two, and that sounds phenomenal. And he, we've got some stuff in the work that I'm not even gonna talk about. Forget I said anything. But yeah, the panda into the fox don't think that you have to run your fuzz first because in this case the fuzzy fox it sounds good but let me just tell you it's not gonna give you that like fuzzy boost like I just got more of a distortion type thing it's not gonna give you that but with it in this orientation it's the stuff it's the stuff it is the stuff. The sauce you need for your tone. This is it. This is all you need. If you get, okay, I'm a worship guitar player. This is all I need. And I actually, if y'all could point me in the right direction, I need some modulation in my life. I need some swooshies and some tremolos. I would prefer 
a multi effect. And I already know Tony. I already know Tony's going to suggest a terraform. So I don't even want to hear it. Is that what it's called? A Wampler terraform. All right, let's. We got some comments here. Let's see what we got. I love that with the Strat 2. I'm going to have to tune up my Strat. My first question for you, Jason, to your comment is not that you loved the tone. I'm not even going to address that. I'm going to ask why in the world is your Strat not being played? Why? Why do you even have it? The Strat is the guitar. And I mean, I even I even have my Bernie sitting over here. But I ain't even gonna I ain't even gonna touch it unless y'all want to hear humbuckers uh, with these with these guys. A strat is the sauce. Although I will say your PRS sounds sick. I love your PRS. It is it is the stuff. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yes, the fuzzy fox does Sabbath stuff. It does. All the fuzz stuff you could imagine. Like, um, I really appreciate some of, uh, okay. You're saying a strat is a knife to a gunfight? You gotta be kidding. Uh-uh. I'm gonna need you to leave this live stream now, Jason. That is, oh man. I, if that's what you meant, we're gonna have problems. If that's what you meant. Okay, Bear tells me I need a Keeley Seafoam Plus. I have never owned a Keeley pedal. I've heard nothing but good things. Uh, maybe I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I play worship, but come from a background of head cutting on a blues stage. Guys, comment section is crazy. Mike is willing to sell me his MD500. That is tempting. That is tempting. Y'all know exactly what I'm doing, right? I am pushing off the release of this because I'm trying to build anticipation for it because it's a cool pedal. It's a sick pedal. Okay. We got the Fuzzy Fox out of the way. The only reason I didn't demo my normal Fuzzy Fox... Um, Um, the only reason I didn't demo my normal Fuzzy Fox is because this is a prototype and I didn't have the bias trim pot in yet. I might actually... I don't... Stop it, Stanley. My wife knows nothing of my guitar purchases. My, my wife knows nothing. This amp just showed up, okay? It just showed up. I don't know where it came from. Along with the Atlantic, along with everything else I get, it just it just shows up, okay? All right, guys. Let's see. Okay, we want to hear some humbuckers. Let's do it. My Les Paul is always slightly neglected. Maybe because I, it's, I think, I think it's because I'm so weak. I'm not very strong. I, this, this is heavy for me. This is heavy for me. Okay. Oh, I had it in drop D? I never play in drop D. That's... So many boxes, my wife says, just showing up at the door. I have a problem, guys. See, I, I, can't, I can't talk as freely on this live stream uh, because my wife is here. 
Just let it happen. I like it. Thank you, Stanley. All right, so who who's here? This thing is so, so much hotter than my strap. I volume. I'm not used to it. Tone is in shipping boxes. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, in response to Jason, um, that does suck because you can't just walk in with a new guitar and say, I've had this for years. I've had this for all the, all for forever. This is, it's just been sitting in a case somewhere, you know? So yeah, let's, l l yes, she's here to keep me out of control. So let's see this, Paul. It's pretty cool. Um, the reason I didn't, David, yes, you just heard a Hungry Panda from me. And I don't know if you received it yet, but I'm excited um, to hear what you think. I'm glad your wife liked the artwork. Uh, thank you to uh, Patrick Waters uh, with Beard and Pencil Art. He did a fantastic job on all three of these pedals. I didn't buy anything new, dear. I traded. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Bear. That is always what I say. Sometimes. Sometimes I do trade for things. I find them on Facebook. For example, this guy I got for 40 bucks, okay? And I told my wife I had to have it. I just had to drive an hour to get it. <laughs> I did have to have it. I don't have anything else with P90s. It's not set up and ready for everything yet. Uh, but... Yeah, I don't even know if Patrick has signed on to this video. Um, yeah, he did a fantastic job. Shout out to him. I'll have to tag him in this later. Because um, I am so... I love them. These are exactly what I had in my mind. The bright 50s colors and, you know, just flashy artwork, but yet very simple. Still on the way, watching the mailbox like a poor puppy. That's me every time. Every time, David. What gets me in trouble, I'll say. What gets me in trouble on Reverb, on eBay, it is just... It's making a, a lowball offer and then ending up... Get, and it ends up getting accepted. That is my issue. I'll admit it. Because I'm like, there's no way. There's no way they're going to accept it. No way. And then they do. And then I end up having to pay for it. So... That's the price you pay. So let's go through the poll here. I'm just going to kind of play through these and let me know. guys yes humbuckers sound phenomenal um i'm just i'm a strat guy i can't help it let's go through the fuzzy fox maybe i'll do some do some stacking here and see what we can do
Okay, so that is humbuckers. Yeah. Wow. Okay, it's been a while since I've played my Paul. Um, maybe you won't actually see me. It's been a while since I've played my Paul uh, through these guys, and it sounds massive. Uh, I'm pretty sure I put in some off-brand GFS something in here. Um, and they're hot as can be. I think this one was like 14K. And this one was like 11 or something like that. Like they're, they're pretty hot. So is it time? Maybe I'll just take the back lid off. Maybe I'll just do that. Yes, the wonderful wombat. I mean, that one's, that one's all right. The killer kangaroo. So that's very, very, I'm just going to say that killer kangaroo name is similar to something I'm trying to get out in the spring that I'm trying to release. Um, the awesome aardvark. Guys, this is awesome. The dopey giraffe. All right. All right. I see. I see, guys. Okay. All right. What do we got here? Hold on, hold on guys. Come on guys. Okay, we got something you've probably seen before. Something you've probably seen before. The angry alpaca. The Angry Alpaca has made its return. This is the actual one. This one was kind of a misprint, wrong color. The Angry Alpaca, guys. How cool is that? Um, this is another pedal that I sent to PJ and the Beard for them to do a review and demo on. I need to start looking at my time. I'm in 50 minutes. Y'all need to stop commenting. Quit, quit getting me talking. So, Angry Alpaca. It's making a comeback. Um, sent one to PJ and the Beard. Uh, they, as far as I know, they liked it. I don't know. You can watch your video and see. I just know that I saw um, PJ himself playing it on one of his pedal picks. Hashtag pedal picks with BJ and the Beard. BJ and the Beard. BJ and the Beard. PJ and the beard. Yes. Can you hold the baby and play guitar? I have before. It's sketchy, though. It's sketchy. I know. I'm getting a little long, honey. Don't rush me. So the angry alpaca. Let's do it. I'm dropping picks left and right here, guys. I've dropped two already this live stream. Two. Okay. So... Let's move this one out of the way. Uh, yes, the angry alpaca. We've we've in we've endured some change here, though. Some some well needed, well deserved change. Stanley, you are a much better father than me. I guess. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, angry alpaca. What do we got? A two transistor fuzz uh, with BC-108s. A high gain um, spinoff of a fuzz face, um, a woolly mammoth type deal. Um, super beefy, super huge. Um, yeah. And we got some trim pots in here to play with. We got fun, fun stuff here. If they fall, they fall. Yeah, it's, it's, it is what it is. So, we got a level on the front here, and then we have a gain, like a traditional. doesn't look too different from a fuzz face, from anything like that. But the gain is what they call a variable feedback resistor. Um, so rather than, it does change the amount of gain that this pedal gives you, um, but in a way that is mainly changing the characteristic of the gain. Best way to do is to show you. I think I left it stock. I'll have to 
show you I'll have to show you the rollback um, with the strat because this guy has a whatever they call it treble bleed and it doesn't like to roll back on this pedal very much but let's roll through that gain control and see how it's different So it's massive. Now let's do some fun knob turning. So yeah, it, all the way back, it gives you like a traditional high gain two transistor fuzz circuit. Uh, what that, whatever, whatever you want to say that sounds like um, to your ears. And then all the way up, it rolls down the gain while it rolls down the treble a little bit too. Um, it gives you a little bit like of a mid hump. My favorite setting is kind of honestly like this. Uh, where the level is at 9 o'clock, gain at 3. Uh, we're going to switch back to the Strat so we can do some volume roll-offs. Guitar switching mid-live stream. This is an acquired skill right here. It's not hard, but it's hard for me. Playing a fuzz face, Jason, I better look at you for this. If you're playing a fuzz face, it has to be through a Strat. It has to be. Because that's Jimmy. That's Hendrix, dude. That is Hendrix. Okay? I'm done talking about it. So, let's see. <laughs> It is such a fun, fun. Thank you, Tony, for telling me that my computer muted my mic again. So yeah, thank you, babe, everybody, thank you. This is, it's getting real embarrassing because I'm not a professional at this. I have a shoddy setup at best. So we have some internal trims to play with. We have a gain, which we know that a fuzz face, um, 
It does. It is a good time. It is a good time. This pedal is a real good time. So it has a fuzz face, like a fuzz face. Gain sounds best maxed um, or almost maxed. You roll it down and you begin to lose that high end presence. So I put that internally and I changed it um, to a variable feedback resistor externally to change your gain characteristic. But I also, just for fun, said, hey, I want to control the Q2 transistor to give it spit, to make it splatty. Um, and that's just what I want to show you. Let's roll that back. Let's make it splatty. As you can hear in my rollback, I got a lot of delay going on here. So let's give it a listen. I'll turn some knobs, see what we got going So there's something weird that happens when you roll the gain all the way up to like that lower gain setting and you um, roll the volume back on the guitar, roll it up. Uh, it ha has such a unique tone. Give it a really fun it is fun um i love the splatty sounds would i ever use them live maybe not um they're not really my thing i think my uh my main camera died uh, but they're really not my thing uh tone blender sounds like a fender tone blender i'm assuming you're meaning uh, it's like a pushed radio yeah honestly uh, it's got a super unique sound. The bias does a lot for the pedal. Um, it's super cool. It won't have a green LED, new. It'll be pink uh, to match the enclosure, kind of like the other. The, you won't see this one. Kind of like the other. Um, green was what I had. But yeah, what do y'all think of the Angry Alpaca? Do y'all want to hear it stacked, maybe? That's what I'm thinking. Let's stack it. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see. Mike. Yes, I think we've talked about it before that you are from Wisconsin. Um, spotted cow. I don't drink, but I can tell you that I am roughly about 15, 20 miles from New Glarus. Uh, so I am very, very close to New Glarus. Um, cool. Cool, guys. So let's do some stacking. <laughs>
Yeah, the fox um, is a pretty unique animal. Uh, you notice, Tony, that you probably do. Uh, I've designed the fox to be super quiet. I don't want uh, mini pedals to interfere with um, just noise level or anything like that. Um, so a lot of a lot of uh, noise filtering stuff like that is going on in the fuzzy fox to give it such a quiet, like here. This is, this is on, this is on, maxed, off, no super buzz, even the angry alpaca, it's on, you can hear my grounding issue in my house, uh, but yeah, I've designed, um, I designed them all to be standalone units but they all stack very well together. I wanted them to be, well, let's just say it this way. I wanted you to have to need, to need them all, G to give your wife an excuse to buy all of these pedals. So we're at an hour and five minutes here, and I'm gonna wrap up with a little bit of a jam, a little bit of a something different than I've been playing the whole time because a part of me feels like I've been just playing the same thing over and over again. So let's play out on just the pedals. Let's go for it. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in, um, joining me to journey and to learn more about um, the soul and the purpose behind all these pedals. 
it was so cool to get to hang out with y'all to um, show you uh, what these pedals can do together, uh, what they can do apart, what they have special about them, uh, because they really do mean a lot to me. Um, they, I'm super proud of all of these, and it's so humbling to think that three, four years ago, I was not too savvy with a soldering iron. And now, yes, I'm doing all the work myself, but look how rewarding. You know, to go from something like this to something like this to to these um, that can stand against, you know, the something like a a New X Atlantic, which you know, as a Chinese manufacturer that makes some professional-looking stuff. I mean, I you know, it blends right in. So, guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, it really means a lot for all that have tuned in and watched this with me. Spent an hour of your Friday night um, here nerding out with Guitar Gear. Um, I will post this video up on YouTube. Um, good to hear it, guys. I'm glad that you enjoyed this stream. Um, but I will upload this up on YouTube. It'll be obviously free to watch later on Facebook. Most of you already know that. Um, but thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, it was quite a, quite a, quite a feat for me and I hope to do this again. If you'd like for me to do more live streams, um, you know, featuring some of the pedals I have, um, some cool things I would, I would, I would love to, I'd love to make it a Friday, Saturday, something like that thing to just come and hang out. All right, guys, thanks again for joining me on Scattered Abroad Live. I really appreciate it. And I hope y'all have a great rest of your night.